Swansea then and now. Together we can bridge and change. Or what is it again? To, to, no. Together. This is just Swansea now, Jody. Oh, it is. That's right. It's not Swansea then and now. Just Swansea just now. Just Swansea now. Yeah. So today we have Mike Bramley here. He's the town administrator. That's right. And Michael, I would like to learn a little bit more and hopefully encourage other people to learn more about Swansea mm -hmm. as well. So can you tell me a little bit about yourself? Um, we're also going to talk a little bit about um, what's going on in Swansea, what's happened in Swansea, um, what we'd really like to encourage you to think about um, for adding in more information to your um, your psyche to just learn more about Swansea and things that are going on. So, all right, so what we're going to start with today is Michael Branley. Who are you? Where did you come from? And what do you do for the town of Swansea? So I grew up in Chester, New Hampshire, over in uh, Rockingham County on the eastern part of the state. I uh, went to Pinkerton Academy in Derry for high school and UNH for undergraduate and a master's degree in public administration. Uh, for about the last 10 years, I've been working in local government. So I did a uh, fellowship in Moultonboro, New Hampshire, up on the, in the Lakes region. Then I served as town administrator in Francistown, New Hampshire, for about three years. And then I've been in Swansea uh, since 2015, so a little wow. over four years. Wow. And so just generically what a town administrator does, it's kind of comparable to a superintendent of schools, which a lot of people have a little more experience with that terminology. Um, so oversee the general day-to-day -day operations of the town. I coordinate with the different department heads, the police chief, fire chief, DPW director, and I attend meetings of the board of selectmen who are the governing body of the mm -hmm. town. Uh, we prepare for the annual town meeting, which is coming up. I think that's one of the items we're gonna talk about today. Um, and then basically make happen the projects that the voters approve with the money that the voters uh, fund. So that's right. that's kind of a general overview of who I am and yeah. where I came from. Great. So our town budget, just off the top of your head, what what is our town budget approximately? Uh, it's a little over six million dollars, is the operating budget. Yeah. And then we have other uh, different projects that I get that get approved either through capital reserve funds or bonds. Mm -hmm. But the general operating budget is a little more than six million dollars. Mm -hmm. Yep. And what is our area? Because I know that our, our area is almost as big as Keene. I believe uh, it's actually a little bigger. Is it I think bigger? It's about 45 square miles. Is it really? And it's actually a little larger. Okay. And population wise, Swansea is the second biggest community in, mm -hmm. in Cheshire County. Keene's obviously got a bigger population, but otherwise Swansea is the kind of second Right. Second biggest community. Yeah. And we have five villages. That's right. So it is Swansea Center, yep. which is what we're pretty much going to talk about today, but there's a lot of other things. Swansea Center, North Swansea, West Swansea, East Swansea, and Westport? Yes. Okay. So there's a lot to do in our town. And I, I've been very impressed. I started going to the selectman meetings, and I had no idea what to expect. I've never been to a selectman meeting. I was... I, my first reason was because I am part of the Swansea Preservation Society. And I wanted to learn more, like, how does the government work in Swansea? How do decisions get made? And honestly, I've been very impressed because money is just not thrown around. I mean, you guys are really thinking about every mm -hmm. decision that you make. And I, I, I really have been impressed. I may not agree with everything that ever happens for the town of Swansea because we're Who all does? human. Yeah. Right. But I think you guys are doing, you know, a pretty good job of mm -hmm. the things that I'm seeing. You know, Thank the you. Eaton Road project. Mm -hmm. Yes, people complained about Eaton Road because they couldn't go down it during the summer. Are you happy with it now? I think so. Mm -hmm. You know, we go to the the recycling center. Not the dump. Not the dump. <laughs> yeah. But we go to the recycling center and that road is the nicest it's ever been. And I've heard that from people that have lived in Swansea, mm -hmm. you know, like all their lives, that that road is... Has always been a problem. It always has been a problem. Right. So, you know, we've had yeah, that. Yeah, that was a major project for us. It was over, uh, all told, once the road gets finally repaved, or the final coat of paving, mm -hmm. uh, next year will be like a $1.6 million project. So for us, that's a pretty big project. Right. But uh, it's like one and a half miles, so it's about $100,000 a mile, mm -hmm. um, or a tenth of a mile. Um, but yeah, no, that was a big project for us. A lot of work, a lot of permitting, engineering, different things. But I think all in all, it came out came out good. Right. And like you said, it's definitely an improvement from how uh, where it was. Right. And definitely. Yeah. So one of the things that I know that you guys have started working on is a, a website, 
I mean, we already had a website, right. but you're updating the website. Right. Just uh, just issued the press release today that it's officially uh, officially live as of Friday, uh, January 3rd. Oh. Our new website is swanzynh.gov, and it's got a new look. You mentioned the uh, five villages, one community. Mm -hmm. That's kind of the new mantra, at least on the homepage right now. Mm -hmm. um, so we're really excited. We think it has a lot of user-friendly um, features. We think it has a nice new look, like I mentioned. Um, hoping folks will go on there. There's a way to subscribe to get uh, different updates and emails directly from the town, either text or email. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, no, we, we really think it was important to refresh the website, give it a new look, and hopefully make it uh, easier to use. A lot of transactions can be done online. People can pay their taxes, register their uh, motor vehicles. So we're hoping that's going to be a positive improvement. Yeah, I, I'm really impressed because um, what I'm happy to see is that you're going to be able to email us out Mm -hmm. information because and that, we always had that feature but a lot of people either didn't just, know it couldn't find it it wasn't wasn't very things were effective. hidden a little bit more right yeah yeah and um I, I really am interested in what's going on in the town of swansea but it has to make you have to make it easy for me because right. i don't are have busy. exactly and you know like you guys are doing it all the time right. but you know like i've got to take time to sit in front of my computer or to be on my phone and to look things up mm -hmm. and so making it easy is huge for me. That's what we're going for. Yeah, yeah, I think that's great. Okay, let's see. We also have the Carpenter Home. Mm -hmm. um, that closed... So it was in, in a 16-bed assisted living facility for mm -hmm. the past several decades, and this May, unfortunately, it did have to close mm -hmm. due to a number of factors, which mm -hmm. We're not going to get into, I think, today. Right. But um, so it was closed. It's something that was gifted to the town, uh, I think, 1930, we mm -hmm. were just saying. Mm -hmm. um, so the town's owned it for a long time. The idea is that it be used to either serve as a home or other purposes for for folks in need, essentially, is right. how we're looking at the, mm -hmm. the use. So right. um, we had a committee this fall that did a lot of great work, had a lot of meetings, reached out to a lot of community organizations. And uh, we're currently reviewing a few different proposals for use at the Carpenter Home, uh, still accepting you know applications from interested associations. Again, we're looking mainly at nonprofits or human service organizations, but uh, it's something hopefully in 2020 we get a new kind of occupant in there and get it back up and running. Right, right. And so how many beds again? It was 16 beds. Mm -hmm. And it, the facility has, you know, like a kitchen. It has mm -hmm. everything that it would need because it was a... An assisted an old, living. Well, it was an old farmhouse, and then right. became yeah, exactly. an assisted living facility. Yeah. But yeah, it has yeah. three, you know, ADA compliant, pretty mm -hmm. recently renovated, nice bathrooms. Uh, I think there are actually fourteen bedrooms, and a couple of them were um, two beds, like doubles. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the kitchen. There's a big common area, so it, it's a unique property, but it does mm -hmm. have a lot of a lot of benefits. And for people who don't know, it's essentially across the street from both the town hall and the high school, for right kind up of on a the perspective. hill. Yeah, and from there you can go hiking up on Mount Caesar. Mount Caesar's yeah, right there. The yeah, cemeteries there just in case. No, <laughs> no but they're not taking new applicants <laughs> in that cemetery. <laughs> No, but but it's a beautiful area, yeah, and really the potash is. bowl is right yep. down below. Yep. I mean, there's just so many things there. The library. I mean, mm -hmm. seriously, Swansea Center. I mean, most of you guys that are watching this are probably from Swansea, but if you've never been to Swansea before, it's a cute little community. The Swansea Center is really the center of Swansea, just because that's where everybody could come together to. Um, from what I understand, we almost weren't the place where the town hall was going to be. It was possibly going to be West Swansea. A well, long think, time yeah, ago. Yeah, I think in, when Wickham Hall was built, I think right. part of the idea was that it was competing mm -hmm. uh, competing to be the new town hall. But right. fortunately, we have Wickham Hall, which right. I think we're going to talk about in a minute yes, here, but yes. um, did not become the town hall for right. whatever reason. Yeah, but. yeah. So we have a little bit more to talk about. We are going to talk about Wickham Hall next. That's a teaser, right? That is. But um, the town hall, um, the Swansea Center town hall, mm -hmm. um, has a fire station underneath it. And we want you to start thinking about that, too, because that's one of the reasons that um, we want to talk with you a little bit today as well. So, let, okay, but we're going to go back to Wickham Hall. West Swansea, things are booming. Mm -hmm. They have a, a huge mill there. There's all kinds of things going on. George Wickham bequeaths the, the Wickham Hall to the town. Right. And it's used, it's like the best place. I've heard so many stories from people that used to have graduations mm -hmm. there. And um, I even remember back in like the 80s going to a party there, oh. like a dance party. But um, it has been totally renovated. It's 
Incredible. Well, it's it's essentially beautiful. half renovated right now. So the, the first floor downstairs is renovated and has been used since, I think, 2016. It was reopened, and mm -hmm. then it's been rented out for parties. I yeah. actually had my wedding there, so oh, I got married you? there. Yeah. yeah. Um, so it's a great, great little venue right now, mm -hmm. but it's up to 75 people, so sometimes that can be limiting, but we mm -hmm. use it for meetings and different things. But the next phase, which we're going to be starting really in the next couple of months, is to renovate the second floor, uh, which is a big undertaking. It's going to include... Uh, what's called a limited use, limited access, kind of like a mini elevator that'll help mm -hmm. ADA access. It's going to include sprinklering the building, uh, renovating the upstairs, which is in need of a rehabilitation. And uh, that's a pretty major project for us. It includes um, some town funding, a lot of donations that we got from folks, um, a lot of grants from New Hampshire LCHIP, which mm -hmm. is a big grant um, granting organization, New Hampshire Charitable Trust. So that's an exciting project. We're, we're expecting to be done by the end of May, and it'll be fully up and running at that point. Yeah. Wow. I can't wait. No. okay. Are you taking off the, the metal wall that's no. on the walls? No. Oh, no. Awesome. It's a you, re historic rehabilitation. So That, that is great, because yeah. there's something about the decor. Mm -hmm. They have it in the Brick Church as well. Oh, really? They have okay. metal... Um, metal, I don't know what you call it. It's not really um, wallpaper, but it's what they used on the walls. Yeah, so the tin ceiling the tin. that it has it also downstairs is a little more common, but the tin walls are definitely right. a little I, more unique. I'm not unique, sure. I Maybe it was for insulation. I don't know. But but they do. They have the tin walls up on, on Wickham Hall upstairs, mm -hmm. and then, of course, the tin ceiling. And then at the Brick Church, they do. They have that on the, the walls as well. Wow. I, just, you know, like, these things are important because if they get torn down or taken off, they're probably never going to go back up. Right. So right. those are all really important. Okay. So anything else that you had on your list that you wanted well, to you talk mentioned, about besides you, the fire department? Yeah. So you mentioned just kind of West Swansea in general, mm -hmm. um, just to kind of mention a couple other things that have happened in that part of town recently. So Main Street got reconstructed oh. a few years ago. Mm -hmm. It's it's really great. Obviously, Wickham Hall is kind of the call it the crown jewel of that area. Mm -hmm. um, there's the covered bridge down the road. Then across the river, you mentioned there's the Homestead Woolen Mill. That's a property that's been uh, a little bit underutilized for the last five, six years. And we do have relatively new owners. We're seeing some different activity there, which Great. is exciting. And what, in addition, oh. What are they thinking? Uh, a number of different uses. Okay. Anything that you can share yet, or um, I'm not sure how official okay. any of it is. So that's okay. <laughs> I'm not that's sure, okay. but they have at a, least they have a number of different happening. ideas. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, and also, so in that area, one thing that we got a grant for that we're expecting to, or we're beginning planning work on, is a lot of the roads around the mill, kind of as a combination economic development mm -hmm. uh, for the mill, and also just improving the roadway. We got we got a grant from what's called the Northern Borders Regional Commission, which is focused on areas somewhat near Canada, mm -hmm. uh, impacted by different economic trends. And so we got a five hundred thousand dollar grant to help fund road and sidewalk improvements in That's that part great. of town. So that'll be happening in the next yeah. couple of years. Because that really does need a little bit of help. Right. You know, I mean, when you go down California Street, you know, like. Right. It, it could use it. So we also have the park there. That yeah, is the West Swansea AA Memorial Park. So mm -hmm. that's where Camarlo's used to be and the West right. Swansea Athletic Association used to have uh, property there. So mm -hmm. that's, yeah, now kind of a pocket park, if you will. It's mm -hmm. got uh, some memorial benches. And we're also, uh, work, we also applied for a grant to put a pavilion and uh, either a basketball hoop or some other that recreational facilities to continue to build on yeah. that area. And does that have the bell there now? It does. Okay. Yeah, that used yep. to be on the lawn of Wickham Hall. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Okay. What else, Michael? Uh, well, we you mentioned road projects. Mm -hmm. So we did Eaton Road this year, as you mentioned. In addition to those other roads that I mentioned uh, in 2020, we're uh, planning to reconstruct Pine Street, which is the road that the recycling center is on, uh -huh. uh, and also Holbrook Ave and East Shore Road. So we have you know, three That's road a lot of different areas. Projects. It's not yeah. all in one area. Right. Yeah. A little bit spread out. Right. Right. And um, what, was, what was I thinking? Just went out of my head. Anyway, sorry. Uh, so that's for road projects. Also kind of in the West Swansea area up the road from Wickham Hall. Um, we're currently in engineering for Christian Hill Road Bridge, mm -hmm. which is where Main Street ends, Christian Hill Road begins. That's a... Oops, sorry, go ahead. No, yeah. no, keep going. Uh, it, it, is that the one that is over the old yes, uh, it's the over railroad trestle? it's over the railroad So that one yeah. has been down, that bridge been has been down. It's been closed, right, for... since 2014. Yeah. And so we're in the pipeline for state bridge aid, which pays 80% 
Um, so we just got some good news about that recently. About There was some question about the height requirements mm -hmm. because of that rail corridor under it. Um, but we got some good news there, so that's something that I think will be on the on the warrant this year, mm -hmm. which I think we're gonna yeah. maybe transition. Let's, yeah, into let's talk about talking the warrant about upcoming. A bit. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So so we're talking to you in early January. Um, next couple of weeks, we have what's called the budget hearing, and then we'll also have a bond hearing, which is focused on the fire bond for the fire station. Um, but just to kind of give some general idea of you know what's a budget hearing. Uh, basically, that's kind of the, you know, we've been working on the budget since really August. We took, we meet with the selectmen, get their priorities, uh, get the direction out to the department heads. They put together initial requests. They bring it to me. We kind of hash it out, work together to find um, what we think can be acceptable. Then they present their budgets the, to the selectmen. The selectmen um, obviously have their thoughts, make some adjustments. And then so this is really kind of the unveiling of the budget uh, and the Warren articles to the public. Um, so we do a little presentation, kind of what's the, what are the main changes in the budget, what's increasing, what's decreasing, what's causing those changes, uh, and then get feedback from folks, either questions, concerns, this is too high, I think you should spend more money here. Um, so that, that's really the, the budget the budget and bond hearing, which is coming up on January 15th. Um, of 2020. Of when, 2020. When we're shooting right. this, yes. For yeah. the 2020 budget. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's the budget, and then the deliberation is in February. Right, so Swan And what's oh. different about this deliberation? What happens there? So Swansea is what's called an SB2 community, Senate Bill 2, so we have uh, voting by the official ballot instead of town meeting. A lot of folks who have been in the area a while or maybe moved here from another town in New Hampshire might you know, have experienced a town meeting. Swansea doesn't have a what's called a pure town meeting or traditional town meeting. We have SB2, so in February, February, what did we say, second? Fourth, I think. Fourth. Uh, February 4th, we have our deliberative session planned, which is like the first session of the town meeting. So it's fairly similar to the traditional town meeting, except no final actions are made. So the different Warren articles are presented, they're debated, discussed, they can be amended, but they don't get a final up or down vote there. They all mm -hmm. have to move forward to the official ballot. And then when we get to the official voting day, March 10th, mm -hmm. um, everything has to get then voted on based on what happened at deliberative session. So normally things don't change too much, but we do you know, usually have one or two items that end up getting changed at deliberative mm -hmm. session a little bit. So if somebody has something to say, should they definitely try to get to the budget hearing or the budget and bond meeting, or should they be going to the deliberation, or should they be going to both? Because it really well, is important. We would like everyone to go to both. But. Really? I mean, you really would like yeah, to have people. No, absolutely. So it's nice to hear or to even have, you know, people in attendance, even if you're not going to be, have something to say. Right. At least that's what I've gotten out of going to the selectman meetings is I don't want to say anything. I just want to watch. Mm -hmm. I want to just see how are you spending our money? Right. Because it's not just my money. It's all of your money. Mm -hmm. And this little bit from me and you and all these other people comes, I mean, $6 million dollars is our budget. I mean, that's a lot of money. And right. I know that there's other things that grants and other things I'm sure that go into right. that as well. But um, it's important for people to say things if they need to right. to get it out. Yeah, and a lot of times we talk about it, but you know, we make decisions in a vacuum based on the information we have. And if no one's coming out and saying, yes, do this, or no, don't, it can mm -hmm. be hard sometimes to know what the right thing right. to do is. Right. So participation is key. Right. So please, I, I think um, January 15th is... I don't even know what the, the day Wednesday. of the week. It's a Wednesday. Okay, February fourteenth is a Tuesday, right. um, February February fourth rather, and then the tenth is what a Wednesday it's probably a Tuesday. Tuesday. Okay, yeah. so mark your calendars. Um, you know, you can go to the website as well and um, get all of these dates. I'm sure that they must be on the website mm -hmm. for different calendar dates. Um, yeah, and so, so you kind of were asking at one point about you know which one should people go to. So. New items can't come up at the deliberative session. So they have to either be dis discussed or disclosed is kind of the legal term at mm -hmm. the budget hearing. So if, if it doesn't come, to if, right, if you have an idea of something that, you know, either a project that should get done or something, and it's not already on the warrant, which we post on our website in advance of the budget hearing so people can, can get a view of it. But, you know, if you really think we need a new police cruiser or something, which we buy every year, usually. But mm -hmm. um, for example, and it's not on the budget, it's not in the budget and it's not on the warrant, and you come to deliberative session and you say, I really want a new police cruiser, it's too late. So that's why they're both, they both are important. Mm -hmm. 
there's no there's no action by the people at the budget hearing, but it's the opportunity to give input and then they make you know they make motions and right. stuff at the deliberative session. Right. So it does sound like the budget hearing, um, budget and bond meeting is the is meeting important. that you really do want to get and to. And we really do more of a presentation mm -hmm. kind of of the stuff at the, at that point, and mm -hmm. then at the deliberative session, it's more about kind of getting through um, the articles. So I think they're both they're both important. Mm -hmm. And as far as I know, um, Cheshire TV will be. Um, videoing the deliberative session. We've, we've right. asked them to do that, um, which I think is important for anybody that just wants to watch what's going on as well. But we really do want to have you come to the, the meeting. And they're both, the budget and the deliberative are both at Monadnock Regional High School. So it's pretty easy to find. And um, we hope that you'll plan to be there. Now, we were talking about police, but I want to talk about fire. OK. OK. Yes. So. Fire station. Mm -hmm. We have some photographs that I'm going to pop up, okay. and we're going to start with the town hall. The town hall started in 1911 or 1914 as a town hall. So this is what um, the town hall looked like at one time. As you can see, there's grass out in the front. There's dirt all the way around the building. It doesn't have a little um, place to go down underneath the building. Mm -hmm. And um, that is actually where our fire station is now. So let's go to the next photograph. And that will show you a little bit more. This was the 200th um, um, celebration mm -hmm. of Swansea. And you can see all the cars were out there. there actually, if you look to the, um, the right-hand side of your screen, you can see that was, I believe, the garage where they had the fire um, truck Originally, oh, okay. yeah, yeah, one of one of them. I could be wrong, but I, I know that there was a, a garage there at one time. And so you you said this was the two hundredth anniversary. This so I know you and Lee had talked at one point about which anniversary. So looking at those cars, would that be in the thirties then? Because I think, it I is. think the yeah. actual anniversary would be in the fifties, right? But right. this is kind of the unofficial yeah. anniversary. Yeah. So okay, so yeah. you, you're seeing the the starting of maybe having a fire station there. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And then the next photograph that's more recent. Um, but still, it looks like the windows have changed a little bit. You can see again, if you look over to the right-hand side, there's a larger garage there now. Mm -hmm. And that is what was the second, I believe, um, fire station hmm. for the town of Swansea. And so, as we move on, there's, um, there's the, the building that we have now. Freshly painted. It's beautiful, yeah. And then if we go to the next photograph, Okay, so Charlie Hanrahan. I just had to mention him just because we have this old steamer in our um, museum over in West Swansea. And this was one of the um, apparatuses that they used for fires. Hmm. I don't think we could have, or use it now. But some of the things that I've learned from Lee Dunham in our conversations about the fire stations and things like that and all the chemicals that they used, I can't imagine, you know, doing those kinds of things now. But we were really lucky because years ago they refurbished this steamer. Um, it is at the Swansea Museum, and now you can go and, and visit it. But now we have a lot more. They're a little bit bigger now. Yeah, we have a lot more um, space needed for vehicles. Um, there's a lot more chemicals that are in our houses mm -hmm. than there used to be. Um, there's a lot of reasons that we need to start thinking about, and I know it's hard, thinking about getting a new um, fire station. Uh, we've got to do something, because if you look at our, our fire station, and let's look at another um, photograph of like the garage and, and that area. Um, it's, oh, this That's is Eric. A, Eric Matson. just to mention. Eric Matson is our interim fire chief. Yes. Okay. So what he's looking at is something that we're going to look at in another show, but that is a plan for a proposed fire station out on um, Old Homestead Highway. Right. So we'll talk with him a little bit later. There you go. That's the one you're looking for. Yeah, that is. So that's probably, I'm thinking, 60s, 70s. And what they did was they dug out underneath the town hall. And I've asked a couple of people, like, why would they do that? And a lot of it had to do, I believe, excuse me, with money because it was much cheaper to take out all of the dirt and dig it out and put in the structure for the fire trucks than to build a new building and you know go through all of that. So they dug that all out. They made it so that it, it could be worked. But look at how much smaller those fire trucks are. Mm -hmm. And again, back then, almost everything was wood, pretty much. Right. You know, like you didn't have a lot of other 
um, like, you know, like the furniture was probably, you know, stuffed with wool or something. It wasn't synthetic. Right. right. So anyway, so this is an older picture of the Swansea Center um, Fire Department. There's a more recent version. Mm -hmm. um, do they ever get water down there? Yes. Yes, they do. Yeah, there are a number of drainage issues uh, that we've tried to do some digging out around the foundation, mm -hmm. but unfortunately hasn't really hasn't really solved it. So that's that's one of the issues. Space is an issue. Um, the fact that the lockers in the in the station are just in the truck bays, yep. getting diesel fuel diesel fumes uh, just pumped on them. Uh, the diesel fumes also come up and percolate up to town hall and yep. can give folks headaches and yeah. have to leave sick. So so um, what we're going to have to do, Michael is we are gonna to have to close out on this show. So I want you to stay tuned for some more shows because we got a lot to share with you. But the fire station needs to be talked about, mm -hmm. okay? Um, again, we have the budget hearing coming up. That is on January 15th. The, the deliberation, February 4th. March 10th is voting. the voting. Yeah. Those are all three really, really important dates and one of the most important things, in my point of view, is the fire station. Right. Because, you know, what we have to look at is, it's not just about, yes, it's gonna cost us money. It's gonna, we're gonna have to spend money, but the longer we wait, the more it's gonna cost. And I went to a meeting that you, you folks recently had with the architect, which we will talk to you on another show. But I was, I was impressed with the thoughtfulness that went behind it and the fact that you guys have had two or three other meetings. You've I asked think, for I think input. Seven different, different seven. meetings between well, with the fire department and the public right. since uh, since this fall. Yeah. So yeah. we've so, really tried to reach out and and again, you know, hundreds of people aren't coming to these meetings, but probably between the different, you know, seven meetings, probably a hundred different people have attended uh, various yeah. meetings between, like I said, the fire department and the general public. So we really have gotten a lot of impact every time we continue to ask the folks that have been coming, does this look like what you're expecting? Does it look modest enough? Does it have what you think is important? And they've continued to say that they do think it, you know, kind of meets the, the Goldilocks Criteria. of big enough, but not too big. Right, so. right. Okay, so... This is Swansea Now. We're glad you joined us today. And you'll be hearing more from us, uh, Michael Bramley and Jody Turner. And thanks for having us. Yeah. And, uh, come on out Here to we go. selectman meetings. Yeah. Okay. Again, bridging tradition and change.